everyone, and welcome to another episode of Alumni Trade Talk. I am Amanda Green, and today I'm joined with Dave Phillips. Dave is a 1987 graduate of Eckerd. He is a co-founder of TPI and has been a PGA golf professional for the last 27 years. He is recognized by Golf Digest as one of the top 50 golf instructors in America. So hi, Dave. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I am great. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me today. Uh, you're very welcome. Always, always welcome to do things like this. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get started. So you're the co-founder of TPI, which I stated earlier, which is the Titleist Performance Institute, combining golf and fitness. So you and your partner, Dr. Rose, came up with the idea for TPI. Can you tell us, you know, kind of how you came up with that idea? Yeah, so, you know, I, um, I was always in the, into sports ever since I was a kid. And, um, you know, when I came over, I actually came to Eckerd from Botswana, South Africa. And uh, I'm probably the first Eckerd graduate from Botswana. But um, I had always, always been involved with different sports. And then when I got out of college, I actually worked in the business world. But I had this passion for golf. And really wanted to pursue that as a career or find out a way to do it. And I got involved with the PGA of America, started uh, working my way towards, you know, becoming a PGA golf professional and then so on and so forth. I became an elite teacher. I worked for a lot of great guys in the instruction business and then started working with elite level professionals. And on my course to doing that, I started studying biomechanics, the human body, and trying to figure out how to help people get better at golf. And then I met Dr. Greg Rose, who at the time was the first chiropractor slash physical therapist that was really um, looking at things that other people weren't doing about how the body moved related to sport. And then it was really my work with Titleist at the time, who's the big golf company, and talking to their CEO about doing something different in the space. And that was combining biomechanics, physical evaluations, nutrition, anything and everything to do with the professional athlete that was being done in Olympic sports and bringing it into golf. And that's how TPI was born. We developed the Titleist Performance Institute out here in Southern California. And uh, we opened that in 2004. And uh, it's, been, uh, it's been quite an amazing journey. We were not only involved with golf, most people think we are, but we actually work with 16 Major League Baseball teams. We have a huge soccer project. We have a tennis project. So there's lots of things we're involved with now other than golf. Oh, awesome. So yeah, you definitely have a different um, sports that you can tap into. Is there any um, ideas or talks of um, other sports you're gonna kind of break into? Well, really, the sky's the limit. You know, golf is one of the sports that was, um, there's a lot of, a lot goes into being an elite level golfer, right? Um, from the mental coaching to everything else. And the, fortunately, golf spends a lot of money on those things. So what we started doing is studying a lot of things other people weren't doing. And now we can really take what we do into any sport because the way we do it is we come up with movement assessments. We look at the body first. So my contention as a coach now is that if you're trying to swing like somebody, a golf club, or play another sport like somebody else, then we better check you physically to see if you can do what they can do. If you can, then have at it. If you can't, then you're going to struggle trying to be like them. Whereas you should, you should really figure out what you're good at, how you move, right. and then base your, your kind of uh, athleticism on that. Right. That's great. Well, so like you said, um, you found, you started it in 2004 and since then it's just kind of become this worldwide sensation. Um, when did you realize that this was actually going to change the course of training for golf and now um, all sports? Well, I mean, two things. First of all, we had a huge sponsor in Titleist, right? So even though myself and Greg own the company, Titleist has been our biggest sponsor, which is one of the big golf equipment manufacturers. That gave us credibility in the space immediately. Right. Day one in 2004, the CEO of the company had arranged for 30 of the top 50 golfers in the world to be at our facility for us to test. When you can test what you know with the best athletes in the world, you can figure out very quickly whether you have something or not. And immediately we found 
we were, we were doing something that they loved and that was beneficial to them. So it kind of exploded. It, it really took off when we built an online education platform and an education platform. And now we have, we've certified over 25,000 people in 64 countries around the world. We have the largest golf health and wellness platform in the world. And now we're doing the same for other sports as well. Um, and so you talked about kind of getting to know what's particular about your body first. <clears throat> so is there a particular age or development stage that you would recommend um, that golfers start utilizing TPI? You know, the beauty of us is we, we built a junior platform as well. So from the age of about five years old till 18, we pretty much can tell you what to do during your growth phase of your life. Um, we spent a lot of time in research looking at young children and looking at overtraining, when to train them, and so on and so forth. So um, I would say, you know, we have a different set of screens for young kids, but once you get to about the age of 10 or 11 years old, you can do what we're doing with professional athletes. It's just on a slightly different basis. So I look at it going, you know, the body is the body. It's going to change as you go through growth spurts. There are things that are, are different when our brain hardwires things um, but, you know, you can test anybody at any time. We have a very simple way to test people, and I think you can really do it at any age. Awesome. Um, and so, as you said, you have over, I think, 25,000 people certified, numerous um, kind of countries worldwide. Um, do you get to travel worldwide um, to instruct these people, and can you kind of talk about um, where you've been and kind of how it is? Um, yeah, sure. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm very fortunate in that way. You know, I, I came here from Africa. I've, I've lived in 27 different countries around the world. Um, I've lived all over Africa, the Middle East, the Far East, Asia, Australia. Today, I still travel constantly around the world. Obviously, right now, we've been locked down for a couple months here. But um, usually two weeks out of every month, I'm going somewhere. And uh, that spans me all over the globe. There's not many parts of the globe I have not been. Um, I, you know, work with Olympic teams from different countries. Obviously, golf is a worldwide sport, so I go all over from Australia to China to Korea, Japan, South America. There's really nowhere I haven't been or it hasn't taken me. So not only did I grow up with a worldwide background and a pretty broad education, I've been able to continue doing that with my, with my business, which is, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it's very lucky. Do you have a, a particular area you kind of like to travel to, maybe take a little vacation when you're there or anything like that? Yeah, you know, it's funny. You kind of develop hobbies as you go. You know, I, I growing up, you know, I, I was born in England. I was raised in Kenya, and then we lived all over Africa. But um, one of my passions, and most people don't know, is coffee. And I'm, I'm kind of like a coffee sommelier. I know more about coffee than probably most people in the world. I've been the the mountains of Haraz and Yemen. I've been Ethiopia. I've been some of the treks that people just wouldn't go to find the best coffee beans in the world. And uh, it's just something that I do. So when I go to these different countries, I usually spend a day on the front end or the back end searching for the best coffee shops or the best coffee I can find. And uh, that's just been kind of a fun hobby that I've had. And I'm actually turning that into a business with uh, a pretty famous golfer by the name of Phil Mickelson, who many people will know. Oh, yeah. Phil, I'm, I'm part of his team. I've been involved with him. We've been friends for a long time. And we are launching a coffee. It's called Coffee for Wellness, which will be coming out later this year. Oh, that's awesome. I love coffee. Um, I'm a big iced coffee drinker, so I'll definitely uh, be trying that whenever you send it out. Very cool. Um, and so, as you mentioned, you um, – work with some Olympic teams, but I'm assuming, you know, being on the PGA, being a PGA golf professional, you've kind of gotten to work with some really cool celebrities. Of course, you just said Phil Mickelson. So um, just, you know, what is it like kind of getting to instruct these celebrities and high professionals? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, again, my, my sport, when you, when you do what we do, which is something different, you get exposed to the best in the world. And I've been fortunate. Um, I mean, right now, 35 of the top 40 in the world rankings have TPI certified teams. Those are people that I've been involved with building around those players or instructing. 
Um, I've worked with, I don't know, 30 or 40 major champions, many world number one. So that's not about me. It's about the teams that I build. I mean, there's a lot of people behind them. I think sometimes you think of as a coach, you're the guy. But there are medical people, there are fitness people, there are nutritionists, there are psychologists. I'm really good at building teams and structures around players that make them succeed. I currently coach the number two player in the world. His name is John Rahm. He's a young kind of phenom out of Spain, and I've coached him since he was 17 years old. Um, celebrities, there's been tons. I mean, we, you know, in golf, it's a, there's a lot of movie stars you bump into. I, I don't get into the glamour of that. I just do my job. Right. But yeah, I've worked with a lot of famous people and presidents and kings and crazy stuff. That's great. Yeah. All right, so um, let's go back to your time at Eckerd. I'm told that, you know, as you stated, you came from overseas, um, from South Africa, but you originally came to play soccer. So, and then you developed your love for golf. So what kind of made you fall in love with golf and what made you switch sports? So actually, when I, when I came to Eckerd, you know, I was looking for a way out of Africa, believe it or not. Um, it was either go to Australia and, and uh, move in with my brother and sister or go, go do something else. And at the time, Eckerd was one of only two schools in the country that had international business programs. So that immediately, there was one called Thunderbird in Arizona, and there was uh, obviously Eckert, and they had just launched this international program. I was probably one of the first to ever sign up for an international business program. And uh, sport was part of my life. So growing up playing soccer, it was just something I thought, well, geez, maybe I could go to school and they've got a soccer team. And I didn't have a scholarship or anything. I figured maybe I could go try out. Right. What I didn't realize is I was always a very good golfer. I was a great junior golfer. It was kind of my dad's sport. And then growing up in third world countries, Everybody joins the local golf club because it's how you know what's going on in that country. So I started playing golf at a very young age and I was good. And then when I got to Eckerd and realized they had a golf team, which was kind of just starting, there wasn't really much to it. They had a open, hey, if you play golf and you want to try out. And I just, I grabbed my clubs. I was like, I'm going to go do this. And I ended up shooting the best score of the team. So immediately they were like, okay, you're now on the golf team. And I was like, well, I, I kind of wanted to do soccer, but I, I guess I'll do both. So I, I uh, was on the soccer team. I was a walk on on the soccer team. They had a, a bunch of players on that team that they had brought in and I just did my part. You know, it kept me fit and healthy. I played when they needed me. I wasn't a starter on the team, but I was there. And then I started a few games, but I was ended up being, the number one player on the golf team when I was there. So, and I kind of started the golf team in many ways. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so continuing with Eckerd, what was your favorite memory from your time here? Maybe it was golf, but something else. There, there's so many cool things about Eckerd, just the campus itself. You know, I was a resident advisor in Hubbard house and um, I had a lot of good friends and stuff and there's lots of great memories from um, you know, taking a windsurfer across all the way out past the Sky Bridge and back with my clothes on oh, wow. as a dare. <laughs> Never windsurfed before, got on the board and literally stood up, went all the way out and came all the way back thinking I was going to kill myself or I didn't even know what I was doing. That was a crazy time. Um, you know, we had a lot of great, uh, obviously water sports was a big thing then and there was a gentleman there by the name of Brian Talma, and he ended up being one of the world's greatest freestyle windsurfers. And about 15 years later, I was in Barbados on vacation, and I was sitting on the beach watching this guy windsurf and do these flips in the air. And he comes on to the side of the beach, and it was Brian Talma. And if you go down to Barbados, he is probably one of the most famous windsurfers in Barbados, and he went to Eckerd College and played on the soccer team. So there's so many great memories there. I have... Uh, a good friend, Mark Toulouse, who I'm still very much involved with. Um, he's a very successful businessman. Um, he lives in Barcelona, Spain. And we talk every week. We're still, I was his resident advisor. We were on the soccer team together. So you still build those relationships. And I would encourage anybody at Eckerd to, you, you go different places. And but the, the, you have this unity. You have this time in your life, which is a college that you only ever have once in this time of your life. So you know, you're going to develop friendships there. You're going to lose each other down the road. You're going to disappear. I mean, I didn't talk to Mark for 10 or 15 years. And then it 
flopped up somewhere and we managed to get back together and talk. So, you know, I think it was just one of those things that uh, it's, it's, it's just a cool place. It's a cool place. I remember it. Yeah, definitely. I know there's such a community and uh, family type feel here at Eckerd. Yeah. So my final question is, what advice would you give um, to our current student athletes right now? So again, I mean, obviously this is a tough time, right? I mean, you're, you're kind of thinking about what is it that, you know, the new landscape is going to look like for you. But, you know, this is something that you've got to look at in terms of athletics. You, you've got to understand your body and how you move. If you're trying to get better, it's the little things and it's paying attention to detail. And that means making sure you stretch, making sure you do the little things that seem kind of boring because those are the things that make you a lot better. And I've been fortunate to be around world-class baseball players, basketball players, you name it. And I've seen what the really elite do that are different than everybody else. And they pay attention to the details. They do the things that others don't do. They get up a little earlier. They stay a little later. They show up earlier, and when they get there, they're prepared. And, you know, listen, we're not all going to go on and be professional athletes. This is a time of your life where you should just enjoy doing this because it's good for your mental acuity. It's great for you physically, and it's fun. I mean, college sports is a lot of fun. Man. I've had some of my greatest times in my life going out to those games and celebrating afterwards. You win, you lose, whatever. But I, I really think that during this time more than any, it's a great stress reliever. It's, uh, it, you know, be positive, try and, you know, in the team sports, you need to figure out how you can help the team. You might be sitting on the bench or not playing. I did that during soccer, but I always figured out what could I do today to try and help the team win? And that might be just be there, be a supporter, be a fan. You can always help. And uh, college sports is a great time of your life and you should, uh, you should covet it because when it's gone, you miss it. Absolutely. I completely agree. I played softball here, so I can tell you, yeah, definitely miss it. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, for our fans at home, you can, if you want more information to stay up to date with Dave, um, his website is mytpi.com, or you can follow him on Twitter at TPI Dave. All right. Uh, we'll see you on the next episode of Try and Talk, everyone. Thanks for tuning in.